Hello everyone, I'm Xi Wei Li from Columbia University. Today I'm going to present our work about a secure and formally verified Linux KVM hypervisor. The shift to cloud computing has been one of the most significant tech trends of the past few years due to the increasing demands in online services and the support for scalability. Cloud computing is supported by a technology called virtualization that allows multiple virtual machines to run on a single piece of hardware. These virtual machines and their resources are managed by a privileged software called Hypervisor. Popular hypervisors include KVM, Zen, and Hyper-V are deployed by the cloud vendors on server multiprocessor hardware. Hypervisors are increasingly complicated to support the performance and functionality required by cloud computing workloads. The popular hypervisors include a full operating system kernel to reuse its existing functionality. However, the increasing complexity in hypervisors results in more bugs. The security of users' data in cloud virtual machines thus depends on this complicated and privileged hypervisor codebase, in which attackers that exploit vulnerabilities in the hypervisor can gain unfettered access to all host VMs data. One way to address this security issue is to formally verify the hypervisor codebase, ensuring it contains no vulnerabilities and protects virtual machine data. However, previous formal verification research focuses on simplistic systems designed for verification with limited functionality. For instance, both SEL4 and Certicos do not support common hypervisor features, such as multiprocessor virtual machines. Therefore, these systems are not used in practice in the cloud. In addition, it requires significant effort to formally verify these simplistic systems with only a few thousand lines. In contrast, commodity hypervisors like KVM includes more than 2 million lines of code. The existing verification approaches are intractable for commodity hypervisors like KVM. Our hypothesis is Instead of building new formally verified systems from scratch, modest changes to the existing commodity systems like the KVM hypervisor can make it possible to verify their security properties. And given the changes are modest, we could thus retain the system's overall functionality and performance. Based on the hypothesis, we introduce micro-verification an approach to enable formal verification of security properties of the commodity systems. Micro-verification reduces the proof effort by retrofitting a commodity system into a small core and a set of untrusted services so that it is possible to prove properties of the entire system by verifying the core alone. We have applied micro-verification to KVM to verify for the first time a commodity hypervisor protects VM confidentiality and integrity while preserving its overall feature set and performance. I now discuss how we use micro-verification to retrofit KVM to simplify verification effort. Micro-verification leverages microkernel design to retrofit KVM into SCKVM, which includes a small hypervisor core, K-core, that protects VM data in CPU and memory, which we verify. SCKVM also includes a large set of untrusted hypervisor services, KServe, that includes the Linux kernel integrated with KVM to provide complex virtualization functionality. SCKVM leverages hardware virtualization features available on modern architectures to simplify the retrofit. Our SCKVM implementation supports ARM virtualization extensions. As shown in the figure here, SCKVM deprivileges KServe to ARM's kernel mode, EO1, and runs KCore in EO2, a higher privileged hypervisor mode. Running in EO2 allows KCore to use the hardware virtualization features to protect VM data. To protect VM memory, KCore leverages nested page tables. Nested page tables were introduced by hardware virtualization extensions to enable a hypervisor to efficiently control what physical memory is accessible to virtual machine. KCore not only uses the nested page tables to restrict the VMs, but also the hypervisor's accesses to physical memory. In our implementation for ARM, KCore manages ARM's nested page tables, stage 2 page tables. 
KCore enables nested page tables when running KSurf and manages KSurf's nested page table to ensure the page table does not map to KCore's or a VM's private memory. To simplify KCore, SEKVM relies on KSurf for memory allocation. KCore uses an identity mapping in KSurf's nested page table so that a physical address viewed by KSurf is the same as that on the hardware. This makes it possible for KSurf to reuse KVM's existing memory management functionality for allocating memory. To protect VM's data stored in CPU, KCore ensures KSurf cannot access VM CPU data on the hardware. When a VM is running, KCore ensures only the VM itself has access to the CPU data on the hardware. And when a VM is not running, KCore saves the VM's CPU to its private memory. Thus, in both cases, the VM's CPU is protected. Here I use an example to show how KCore protects VM data when handling a page fault from a VM's nested page table. KCore controls the hardware to trap the page fault to itself, which it then switches to KSurf to allocate a new page for the faulty VM. Before entering KSurf, KCore context switches the hardware to KSurf, ensuring that KSurf cannot access VM CPU data on the hardware. After KSurf finishes memory allocation, KCore unmaps the newly allocated page by KSurf from KSurf's nested page table, ensuring that KSurf has no access to the page. KCore then maps the page to the VM's nested page table to resolve the page fault. Finally, KCore restores VM's CPU registers stored in its memory to the hardware before entering VM. Now that after the retrofit, we have significantly reduced KVM's code base we need to prove, I will then discuss how we verify that the KVM implementation protects VM data. We first verify the functional correctness of the concurrent KCore implementation, ensuring that the implementation contains no vulnerabilities. We define a specification that describes the behavior of KCore and prove refinement, verifying that KCore's implementation refines its specification. Since the implementation refines the specification, we can use the specification to prove security properties of KCore which is easier than using the implementation directly. Specifically, we show that the confidentiality and integrity of VM data is protected for any implementation of KServe interacting with KCore. Therefore, the security properties hold for the entire hypervisor. To further reduce verification effort, we employed a layered approach that enables us to decompose the verification of KCore into simpler components that are easier to prove. To verify the correctness of KCore, start from the bottom layer, we incrementally prove the implementation and each layer refines its specification, and gradually prove that KCore's top layer, which includes the exception and hypercall handlers, is refined by a stack of layers. A key issue is, Refinement may hide intermediate information leakage and do not preserve security properties like confidentiality and integrity. I use a nested page table example to illustrate the problem. A multiprocessor VM has shared nested page tables. That is, the page tables are accessible across multiple CPUs. Therefore, locks are used to protect hypervisors' concurrent accesses to the nested page tables. Although the hypervisor's accesses to the nested page tables are protected by locks, a multiprocessor VM can access the nested page table anytime. As shown in the diagram, the VM on CPU1 can read the guest physical address within the critical section of setMPT on CPU0 using the shared nested page table via the MMU concurrently, bypassing locks. Consider an incorrect setMPT implementation here that makes an erroneous update to map the guest physical address to an address PA1 that corresponds to a private page owned by another VM. Assuming the hypervisor on CPU0 calls this incorrect implementation as shown in the diagram, the VM on CPU1 using the same nested page table that CPU0 updated can access the page PA1 at time T2 which causes information leakage. 
The goal for proving set MPT is to show that the implementation executing in the multiprocessor environment refines the specification that specifies an atomic page table map. So we can use the atomic specification that encapsulates the concurrent behaviors of the implementation for further reasoning. However, previous refinement approach hides the intermediate updates and do not distinguish between the correct and incorrect implementation for set MPT and would end up refining the two implementations to the same atomic spec, hiding information leakage and not preserving security. We introduce security preserving layers to ensure refinement does not hide information leakage and preserves security properties. Security preserving layers employ transparent trace refinement to track intermediate updates. Transparent trace refinement ensures that the implementation reveals at most as much information as its specification, such that the refinement can preserve security. Using security preserving layers, we prove that the correct set MPT implementation refines the atomic specification, but the incorrect implementation that includes multiple updates does not. We prove SCKVM's protection of VM data over K-Core's specification at its top layer for all principles, including K-Serves or VM's interaction with K-Core. Using security preserving layers, we guarantee that the security properties we verify over the spec holds on the implementation. We formulate SCKVM's VM security guarantees in terms of non-interference. The intuition here is we want to show that one principal's execution will not infer or affect others' data so that the confidentiality and integrity of VM data is protected. Specifically, we verify non-interference over the machine states that contains a given principal's data like the portion for VM A and B shown here in the diagram. Using micro-verification, we verified our SEKVM implementation protects the confidentiality and integrity of VM data. The K-Core implementation in SEKVM is modularized into 34 security preserving layers, which as shown in the table includes 3.8K lines of C and assembly code that we verified. As Shown in the table, KCore includes the verified hack library to support crypto functionality. This also shows that the retrofit required modest effort. As other than hack code, the retrofit only required roughly 3K additional lines of code to KVM. The proofs for SEKVM are written in cock and machine checked. The implementation effort for our proofs, as shown in the table, is mostly for proving the correctness of KCore which includes the challenging refinement proofs for multi-level page tables. In total of 6K lines of code were for K-Core's layer specifications, which most of them were for the intermediate layers to help us do the refinement, and only 1.7K lines of code were for the top layer specification, which specifies all of K-Core's behaviors. Our formally verified SDKVM implementation supports comprehensive virtualization features, as shown here inherited from KVM, while providing verified VM protection. In contrast, SEL4 and Certicos provide none of these features with verified VM protection. We tested application workloads as listed in the table on real ARM server class hardware running SDKVM. The workloads include a mix of CPU and I.O. intensive benchmarks, which some of them are commonly used server applications, including Apache, Memcached, and MySQL. The graph shows VM performance using baseline KVM and SEKVM. The results in the graph are normalized to bare metal execution, so lower numbers mean better performance. The results show modest overhead in overall on SEKVM compared to a modified KVM. And here I summarize my presentation. Using micro-verification, we made small changes to KVM and verify that the KVM implementation protects the confidentiality and integrity of VM data. Because the changes required to retrofit KVM are modest, the implementation retains KVM's overall commodity feature set and performance. 
Our work is the first machine-checked security proof for a commodity multiprocessor hypervisor. And that'll be all for my presentation. Thanks for listening. I'm now happy to answer questions.